Hello and welcome to episode 6 of our Wakefield to Nottingham Levy building series. Today we're taking a look at continuing the work we were doing at Crofton Depot, uh, which is involving finishing the track work around this area. Um, we laid our feeder line in episode 5 right at the end. So now we're going to expand on that and lay the rest of the yard. We're going to select the select tool here and get straight in. I'm going to select down there. I'm going to drag along this straight. Um, and then we're going to offset a piece of track along this side in here so that we can make sure that all these straights go in a straight line or in the same trajectory, in the same sort of alignment. Because it's no good laying that manually and trying to lay all the rest of them manually because then you'll end up with like curves that go in different directions and stuff like that. If you offset it, you know that it's gone at the exact same angle as the previous track that you'd laid. So when you get to point work at the end, obviously, you've got to connect it up manually. So that's what we'll do now. Set it to yard on the right. Track will do a one. And we're just going straight until the end of the straight. And then curving inwards. Now, you'll notice in train sim, unfortunately, track work does take up more space than it would have in real life because point work the way it renders in train sim so we've got that pretty much bang on but it's going to make it tough for us to do this extra last set around the outside here uh, and we'll probably see why when we get around to it sometimes i'll pull sidings a little bit short if i know that's going to cause problems with uh, fitting it into train sim and by a little bit short i mean like five to ten meters if you have to do um, usually that's just a last resort though and then again we're going to curve this one in and bring it in there like that. So that's the first two sidings in there at Crofton. Next up, we're going to offset this one that's right next to it here. To where the end of the straight is. And once again, offset then click wooden over one. Now note how close we're getting to that one. Even though we've laid these two essentially exactly where they should be more or less, it's still going to be struggling to fit the spacing in. But the way you got to look at it in train sim as well is that so long as the actual layout is correct the fact that it's off by one or two meters is not going to affect the vast, vast, vast majority of users. If you've got kinks in the track and stuff everywhere, that's obviously going to get noticed a lot more than if you've got uh, a metre out or something. So we can go to the end of this one. Once again, we're going to lay the leading points. So that's another entry to the yard end added. Now we can make a compromise here because there's got this gap in the middle, so we can put this next track in. not be too worried about the fact that um, if it's going to be a bit further left because we've got plenty of space um, to the left hand side of it okay so we got the third side in and the bases of that one in now obviously we've got a different yard entry to go in at this end this side we're still working off the same sections of track so we can continue at this end now and then we'll worry about what's happening at the other end in a bit move it to there and you've got to get around the outside of that one obviously and this is what I was on about where it's going to start getting a little bit uh, hard to do things because of the amount of room track takes up in train sim compared to real life It's an issue that only really gets noticed when we're in yards and stuff. Um, you can see here, this one starts curving slightly left there before it actually comes off the platform. Oh, my train seems done the thing there, where it, for some reason my train seem likes to rotate track. I'm not sure quite why it's done that, but it did. Well, rotate anything. It seems to when I press control keys and stuff, it seems to like stick. So we're going to have to go back and uh, redo that bit. But it was straight, so it's not an issue, really. It's back to there. 
So as I was saying, there's a curve. You can see it curves leftwards there. So we've got to put this straight and start it around here somewhere. I think this is the fuel line that we're putting in at the moment. Notice that on the day when Google recorded this, the depot was pretty much what was empty outside. Whether there was anything inside or not, I don't know. But outside it was empty. Um, and it normally is. It's just busy on a night, really. There's loads of stuff goes in on a night. Like any depot, really. But uh, there really isn't much at all goes there during the day. On a normal working day, anyway. It's pretty quiet. So get that one in there. And again, here we're going to have to watch out for that curve. Unfortunately, each one of these is going to have a slightly different trajectory on it. Um, and we may need to think about making one of these a feeder sort of curve. But each one, if you look at each one, it's got a slightly different curve. So it's very difficult to actually uh, pull off. No matter what you do. It's not going to be perfect. That's the next set of points in. You can see it's starting to get quite tight down that end of the yard though now. So then we've got this um, further siding. Goes down the outside of here. Um, this one curves quite early as well. So just going to offset that first bit there. Um, and it's quite a close track again, not further away like the last one was. And this end of the yard is starting to get quite um, difficult to do now. So we've got to try and make sure we don't bring it in too close because if you're bringing it too close you're going to start clipping trains that are on the on, on the next line across so it's better to go too wide than too near again once you're in the game once people are playing the game i've laid that as main line which isn't an issue it's just that the curve won't go sharp enough um it means that you know in the game people aren't going to notice this slightly too wide unless you're like, obsessive or something like looking in the google maps well you know, you might want to do that, but the fact of the matter is, is that the vast, vast, vast majority of people will not do that. Um, and if you start worrying too much, you just end up overthinking it all. So, as I said, from Google, that looks fine. Uh, from without Google, actually, that looks fine, sorry. With Google on, obviously, there's going to be some slight bits where the curve isn't quite the same exactly, but once again, you ain't going to notice that in a uh, game without Google turned on. The only way you're noticing that is if you go into Root Editor. So, we're not going to lay those two yet because they go through the depot build, and that's a different kettle of fish we'll sort in a minute. What I'm going to do now is lay this one for the feeder line that leads out of this end of the depot. So we can see it starts curving there, and then curves, carries on straight into the points, then curves across here, a little bit of straight, and then curves its way out of the depot, a bit more straight. And it's straight across the points, obviously, across the crossing, I mean, and the points are just after the crossing, which is what we've just laid there. So we're getting there, we're going to move points from after about and stuff uh, in a few minutes. Not worried too much about that right at this moment in time. So next up's this track. I'm going to connect up uh, these two here. Um, and then finally we got this one that connects in on this before the uh, shed itself. So we've got this one that connects in next. And we've got the shed roads to do after that as well. So we've got uh, essentially two tracks left. And that's that one in there. I'm just 
going to save the game whilst we've done those. Now, obviously, we can't see exactly where the lines go inside the shed, but we can see that they're straight by the time they go into it. And it's where straight on that bit there, so we can offset from here. And we've got to stop before it starts curving again, which is just after the concrete padding at the end of the shed there. So we can offset that part there, and that should be exactly the same place at both ends of this building, hopefully. Try 9.5 meter offset. That should be about right. In reality, it's probably a 10 meter one. And it's essentially the exact same trajectory. Maybe a slight bias towards the left hand side. If you look, it's slightly different. And oh, I've done that thing where we <laughs> done the thing where it rotates again. I don't know why my game does that. I really do not know why it does it. If anyone knows why it does it, then you know please do tell me. Would love to stop it doing it, because it's really inconvenient when you're in track particularly. So I'll offset that again. So it is slightly off at that end, very, very slightly, but I'm not too fussed about it, to be honest. Um, again, it's one of those things that it's not really an issue, unless you're micro-bugging. So we've gone too close to that curve there. So the way to get around this is that we're just going to have to go a little bit wider with this left-hand track, because we've got more space to this left-hand side, obviously, so we might as well favour it. doing now is just go around the outside of this lot and I'm going to come in. We're coming in a bit later than probably we should do. But we're bringing it in all the same. And we're bringing it in before that gradient change that we added in as well. Ignore the fact we've got terrain on the track there. So we brought that one in. Finally, we've got this last track to put in on the outside here. Now, these two can be offset from each other, obviously. So we can offset through the shed, which is important, because then it means that they stay a constant distance apart through the entire shed. Now, they're once again about 9 metres apart. And that's what we'll do with them. We'll put them 9 metres apart. And there's one final track, I think, down that side. Is that a shadow or a fence? I'm not quite sure. No, it is a... It's a shadow or a fence, that, isn't it? It looks like a track, but I'm pretty sure that's the shadow of a palisade fence. Because it never connects in. Wow, how much does that look like a fence? Uh, how much does that fence look like a track on the inside? I genuinely thought that was a track, but it's not. It's a fence. Oh, well. We'll carry on. So we're just carrying on down this yard to the end. I'm going to bring this one in where it comes in, which is just on this far bit of the curve. So that's all point work at this end layer. We've got a couple more to do at that end, but whilst we're here, let's just move these points work because at the moment you can see we've got them right through the track and all sorts. Just going to move them out of the way so that they're on the outside if they're going to be causing issues on the inside sort of thing. It's not looking bad at all now. We're all out on this end in terms of points. There's no uh, ones in the wrong place. Next up, we've got to put these last two lines in from the depot itself. So we'll put the outside one in first because it's easier to connect in that way. It's easier to connect the inside track to the outside track sort of thing. In this uh, instance, it probably doesn't matter too much, to be fair. There we 
I've connected that one in. Now all we've got to do is put this one in. And that is the track work laid in Crofton Depot. To be honest, that was easier than I was expecting. I was expecting that to be a bit of a nightmare for some parts, but um, it's not been too bad, actually. So you can see we've got all... How many tracks is there? There's six, eight tracks. It's a fairly sizable depot, actually, these days. On the inside of the uh, curve, almost looks like a smiley face. Okay, so what we didn't add in in one of the previous episodes was the controlling signal as you're coming out of the track, as you're coming out of the... Depth. Okay, so I've been to have a look at the signal diagrams and work out what the signal and routes are from this signal. As far as I can tell, it's that there's two routes from the signal. You can go either up Gould towards Wakefield or up Monk Breton towards Monk Breton. Obviously, the Wakefield route is the one that we're using the most. I'm not aware of it being possible to shunt out onto the wrong line here and then um, reverse. As far as I can tell, everything seems to go towards Wakefield which would tell me that because there's no shunt signal on this one um, everything goes on the route in the right direction of travel so link number one we're going to put in on the up goal link number two we're going to put in on the up button and the signal we've just placed is a three aspect LED signal and it's got two track links it's a gantry signal with a theatre box and it's a double character theatre box. Now what the double character theatre box means is that you can put two characters in there. So for instance we're going to put in link number one, UG for the up ghoul, and link number two we're going to put UM for the up monk breton. Um, and quite simply that just makes it so that those letters will appear when you place those, when the uh, routes are selected, they'll appear in the theatre box. The TH ones are just single characters, so I'll show like one letter or one number or whatever. The signal number is WK and it is 6832. We'll look at doing some sort of post or something for that signal, I think, because it looks a little bit weird just sort of sat on the ground there like that. got no back on it or anything we'll worry about that when we come to doing the actual scenery in terms of TPD rest ramp I just need to have a look at that as well because I haven't checked that I would suspect there is one there and there is oh is there it might not be one actually Okay, so I think that's everything set up around here now. Don't think we really have anything else to worry about for the moment. And we'll leave episode 6 here with the depot and the signal exiting the depot done. Episode 7 we'll probably concentrate on doing some more signal work because we have now got most of the track in we've got. What we've got to do is some track at Pontefract, we've got some track at Ferry Bridge and nothing left to do. Um, beyond that, there is onto signals and stuff and track properties and eventually maybe in about 10 episodes time we'll be doing some scenery work uh, and getting on with that thanks for watching guys don't forget tom's on twitch usually tuesdays and saturdays at 8 pm that's twitch.tv forward slash trains in tv underscore tom and uh, thanks for watching guys any questions as always do ask in the comments goodbye